Hello, in today's video, we will go through the process how to consume SCP Near River BW Box Query in SCP Business Object Design Studio. Okay. Um, firstly, we need to log on to SCP BW Box Query Designer to locate the Box Query, which we would like to consume in SCP Design Studio. As you can see, I have already opened the Box Query, uh, which is to be consumed in the SCP Design Studio. It's pretty simple query. It just has a few characteristics in the rows and two key figures in the column, right? Um, before we go ahead with the uh, SVP Design Studio, uh, I would like to run the specs query in SP backend, uh, BW backend to have a quick check, okay? I just copy the specs query, technical name, and I log on to SP backend system, I run transaction, R authority, and then input is back query, like your name, then just simply click execute. Yeah, here is a very you know, simple output of this back query. You can see uh, it can plan materials, the document, add curriculum number record and all quantity. No, uh, it's nothing special, just a very normal SAP BW back query. Okay, now the next step is to open the SCP Design Studio and consume this SCP Best Query in SCP Design, uh, Design Studio, right? So I go to the program, I go to SAP Business Intelligence, then I go to the SCP Design Studio. Okay, this is the welcome page of the SAP Design Studio, right? I, I click Help and I go to About. You can see I have installed SCP-1 of the SCP Design Studio 11, right? This is the latest version. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead with the uh, uh, consume of the SCP back query data. So first we need to create analysis uh, application, okay? And we just give a name as same as the uh, SVPW back, uh, back query technical name. For description, I give BW back query. Oh, sorry, I would like to give field order, right? A target device, choose iPad, iPhone, but for our testing purpose, I just choose the desktop browser. Okay, um, then I just click next. And here you can select a brand new uh, empty application or you can choose from a desktop template. So for our test purpose, we just choose the desktop template. Okay, and then click finish. Yeah, here is the uh, uh, sample template overview. As you can see, this is the course tab table, but we will fo only focus on the first tab, the data part, not the uh, chart part, okay? So um, then we have already created the empty uh, application from a template, and then we have to choose a data source to bind that data source to this application, okay? So uh, in order to do that, so I go to application, I go to the add data source, okay? I can choose the data source and connection. If I click the browse, see here is all the connections I created in SVP GUI, right? So I just choose SVBW 7.31, right? Okay, I just give the uh, credential for my SVBW system. Okay, for data source, you can also close, click, browse, and search, right? We, we already know the technical name of the best query. I can just put the query name and put search. Or 
you can choose info area. And if you, if you know which info area your back query located, you can also do this way. Okay. For data source alias, I would like to give the same technical name, right? So simply click OK. So we have added the ICP data source to this application successfully. All right. So then we have to bind the data source to this table. Okay, here we choose this table. Uh, just move it a bit and enlarge it. Okay. Okay. So if you move the properties, we'll see here is data binding. Okay. We can choose data source. We just add it. Okay. It's pretty simple. See here is some sample data from the uh, back square data source, right? And here you can do some fine tuning or re um, definition of this uh, table property. Okay, you can enlarge the weights. For example, I give like 150, and you can also auto. All right. So now we can simply click execute locally and to, to check the output. Yeah, here you can see, this is a very simple um, query uh, binded to this uh, um, ICB Design Studio application. And the output is uh, as same as the uh, BW output. Um, you see here, the data is, uh, you know, um, identical, but of course, the uh, I mean the uh, the format is more fancy, okay. And we can also to uh, uh, do a further more check, I mean test to check the drop down list, okay. So what we can do the next step is that um, we will uh, create two uh, fields or I don't know as drop down list here, one is for material, and the other is for plant. For the, the rest, we just leave it, because we only want to test it to, you know, um, for the uh, field purpose, all right? Okay, let's go back to the design studio, and first one, I would like to name it uh, plant, okay? Um, here, we can change the text, all this, um, I mean, label to uh, plant, okay? And then here for the uh, drop-down uh, drop list, uh, we need to change a bit. Okay, yeah, so this is a value. So if we go back to this plant, I would like to give like CD01, FG06, okay, CD01. FG06 and one more maybe. I FG1. Okay. Yeah, FG1. All right. I just removed it. Give the same text. All right. Okay. And then for the next drop down list, I would like to rename it to uh, material. So let's see name. Okay. So for the drop down list, I would like to do the same. And this is here. This is the material. Actually, for the text, um, be given the material name, but um, we just give the same. I mean, the ID, you know, it's just for test purpose. Okay. Uh, but in the real case, it should be the uh, material name instead of the material ID. Okay. Okay. 
Mm. One more. I remove this one. Okay. Uh, so far, we have inserted the filter value for both plant and material. Okay. Uh, then we, what we have to do is to link this um, drop down list to this table. Okay. Here you can see there is the event. Um, so on select, we can add some very simple code to link the our drop down list to the table. Okay. Uh, if the user changed the drop down list, uh, what kind of events should be triggered? Okay, that means we have set the filter to the data source, right? Um, okay, so what's the data source? Here you can see there is a seat that field, right? And the dimension. This one is for the plant. Um, okay. And for the value, it should be. Here is the get selected value, right? Okay, so it's pretty simple. We would like to do the same for the material. I want to need to change this to change. Material. See here is a list of dimension. All right, you can choose simply the material the same way. Okay, okay. and then to save it, uh, I run it again. So here we have the plant, here we have the material, and if we choose, okay, if we choose the plant FG06, now as you can see, only F, FG06 plant is displayed in this table. If I choose another PFG1, and PFG1, okay, let's try it again. See here is DD01, right? If I choose the FG06, FG06. Choose PFG1, seems it's not working, and we need to go back to check why this filter does not work properly. Yeah? Like remove this and choose a new one. Oh, sorry, it's FPG one. Sorry. All right, save again and then run again. It's the uh, I choose FG06, it's FG06 and FG01, sorry, FPG1. Okay, now it works, it works. All right, so it, we choose FG06, I choose this material, or this material, right, and 
this committee is now working. Okay, um, maybe I need to go back to check. Mm. Oh, sorry. I have to change the drop down list to six, as you know. Drop down two is for material. Drop down one is for the plant because I just copied it from the plant to material. I did not change it, so I have to change it. Now it should work. Okay. Save and then just need to refresh. Close it and run it again. Okay. Here it works, right? Only this material is displayed. Choose another one. See here. Okay. So, okay. So, this is all about how to consume SCP Network Without Best Query in SCP Design CODs. It's pretty simple and thanks for watching.